2018. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Bonnie, please. Mrs. Cerucci. Here. Here. Mr. Gottman. Here. Dr. Kalkstein. Here. Mr. Lapsevich. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. O'Donnell. Here. Mr. Ritter. Here. Mrs. Warning. Here. Before we get to agenda items, can we just maybe take a moment of silence for the students that were lost in the Florida school shooting? First up is um, comments from residents on agenda items. Has anybody signed up to speak, Bonnie? No one's called in advance now. Okay, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak? Mr. Yakum? State your name and you, address, please. My name is John Yakum. I do live in Monroeville. Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Short, Mr. Dice, and members of the staff. My name is John Yakum, and I am a resident, a lifelong resident of Monroeville. Today I'm coming to you with the hat I wear in a volunteer position. I am the president of the Beaver Valley Area Beekeepers Association. That's important because we are a member, we, are, we with other beekeeping organizations in western Pennsylvania comprise and organize an event that occurs once a year which is the Pennsylvania State, sorry, the Pennsylvania, the Western Pennsylvania Area Beekeepers uh, Seminar. This year, we brought it to Gateway High School. For the last 30 years, it's been in the North Hills. Two years ago, we brought it to Monroeville at one of the hotels. Last year, through the cooperation of a couple school directors, it was suggested that we bring it to Gateway. And I wanted to give you a little report of our event. We had beekeepers from five states, Ohio, West Virginia, Michigan, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. We had beekeepers from Philadelphia, State College, Erie, and everywhere in between. We had researchers from the University of uh, Michigan and Penn State University. We had, we had speakers from <coughs> Ohio and Pennsylvania. All in all, we had 350 beekeepers here at <coughs> Gateway. One of the reasons why I wanted to bring the event to Gateway is because I'm a big fan of Monroeville and I'm a big fan of Gateway and our community is second to none. Unfortunately, our community gets in the newspaper for a lot of the wrong reasons. Well, 350 people saw Gateway for what it is, which is an outstanding facility. They also saw the community for what it is. We had cooperation from several local businesses, restaurants, uh, visitors, the Convention Visitors Bureau all worked together to help us bring this event to Gateway. The out-of-towners love the staff, love the facility, and the local beekeepers who oftentimes get their impression about Gateway from the media were pleasantly surprised to see the facilities that we have. The primary reason for me coming tonight was just to tell you, Dr. Short, and the board about your staff. We dealt directly, I dealt directly with Dave, Maiko, and Patty Jovanovich. They were outstanding. Uh, every time we asked Maiko for something on the event day, he just gave me this look and like, okay, no problem. And five minutes later, it happened. We would text him that we were having a small issue with something or another, and <coughs> within minutes it was fixed. We annoyed the hell out of Dave. Um, we had about 35 vendors, and uh, if you've ever been to shows, you know vendors can be demanding, they want electricity, they need this, they don't like their space. And since we've never used the facility before, we had to be very flexible, and that involved a lot of conversations with Dave, and he was very, very understanding. All of our needs were met. Um, Patty was very great to work with when it came to uh, discussing the, um, you know, trying to make sure that we had the right room assignments. Uh, so all in all, it was an excellent event. We appreciate what happened. We're hoping that we can come back again next year. 
We will be filing the paperwork shortly <coughs> when they start out next year. I assume that bell was for me. It was. Okay. <laughs> One suggestion. Obviously, education comes first, and I, I completely understand that, but there's one thing that's kind of was a little bit of a, a, a hurdle, and it's a potential hurdle for other events like ours. Keep in mind that our vet probably spent, between food, speakers, printing, and facility, about $17,000, $18,000. About $7,000 with the facility. There's a policy that says that the event can be changed almost to the last minute to accommodate a gateway event. When you're bringing 350 people into an event, it can be a little bit unnerving to know that if a teacher has to change a band concert, we can get bounced at the very last minute. And as a suggestion, if there's something that you can put into the policies, that once a, vendor, once a group has established a contract, that um, there's a, a window where, unless it's an earth-shaking educational event, we can't get bounced, because I think that might be keeping out other groups from using these facilities. Again, thank you. Your staff is terrific, and I've already taken more time than I'm supposed to, so thanks for a few minutes. Thanks, Mr. <laughs> <Thank you. coughs> Is there anyone else that would like to speak on agenda items? Okay, seeing none, let's move on to Section B, Bills and Financial Reports, Mr. Shaw. Thank you, Mr. Cerici. Uh, be before I get to the actual Section B, I just want like to make uh, two uh, related financial announcements. Uh, the scheduled Budget and Finance Committee meeting for this Thursday, February 22nd, 2018, has been canceled. Uh, the, the first meeting of the Budget and Finance C Committee will occur as previously uh, scheduled on March 15th, 2018, at 6 p.m. in the high school LGI. Okay. Again, that's posted the buildings. This adjustment will be made as well for that. Uh, this evening we have Section B1, List of Bills for the month of February 2018. Section B2, Monthly Financial Statements for the month of January 2018. And Section B3, Budget Transfers for the month of February 2018. Does anybody have any questions, comments for Mr. Schott? Uh, I do. Um, in reviewing the list of bills, uh, Mr. Schott, uh, the one check number, you know what number I'm about to read to you. <laughs> yep. Uh, 88683 for $2,500. Mm -hmm. That's scheduled to go to the 360 group, correct? Correct. And that's for their the retainer fee that they're that they that they made their first request for their. That's retainer. the very would be the very first payment to them. All right, I, I'd like to maybe talk to the board about this. Um, we're not contractually obligated in any real way to actually pay that money right now. That contract was never actually submitted nor approved by the board. We, the board approved hiring the, the group. The contract itself never came across the board's table. So that contract was never legally ratified or approved by the board. So I, I would like to maybe just put a hold on it or table that check until we you know decide where we're going further on. We can do that. Do you want to comment on that, Mr. Well, Dice? You're not voting on them tonight, no. correct? No, no. Mm -hmm. not so, so you understand. No. Okay. No, but for fellow board members, Mr. McIntyre is saying that the actual contract with the 360 group was not technically board approved, just the hiring of them was board approved. If, is if, it null and void? If the contract was not approved by the board, then it's arguable that you have not, uh, yeah, Section 508 says any expenditure of over $500 <coughs> requires board approval. <coughs> I can't remember whether or not the contract was or wasn't approved, but the minutes reflect whatever they reflect. Um, if, it, if it has not been approved, then, then you're correct that, they, that it's voidable. Uh, if, if it has been approved, then you, you do have a contract of sorts with them. Uh, and they have, it appears to me that they've made some attempt in reliance upon the contract to secure potential buyers. At least that's what we've heard. I don't know the names of those individuals. so. You know, you've got a thorny issue at this point, but if your asser assertion is correct, then you've got a voidable contract, voidable, and that you can disavow it. I think, Bonnie, I think you were contacted to look. At, did you ever see anything in the minutes where that was actually submitted or approved? There's no exhibit in the minutes. Uh, I have the, I can pull the minutes if we'd like to look at them. Mr. Lepsevich would like to come. Uh, yeah, Mr. President, um, I was on the board and I seen the contract afterwards, 
Scotty Williams and Bill Short both signed that contract. So I think it's binding if the president of the board <coughs> signed, signed the contract. That's my opinion. So if the contract wasn't actually seen by the public or the board in, in its entirety and voted on, then the corrective action is to actually vote on that to correct the issue because that still doesn't correct the issue if the contract wasn't actually recorded in the yes. minutes as being voted on. I understand that, but I'm just saying it was signed by my president. Yes, that's correct. Anyone else want to comment on this? Uh, on the Building and Grounds Committee, Mr. Donald. Anything? Miss yeah. Warning, anything? Yeah. Anybody? Okay. Paul, you want to continue? Um, that actually concludes section That's B. That's it. <coughs> okay. So, all right, Mary Go ahead, so Mr. What, what was our conclusion on that about not paying this group of people right now? We well, voted. you have until the next meeting to discuss sorry, sorry. it. The Since vote on it, what, next yeah. week? Yeah, you're not passing anything yeah. tonight. Okay. You have a week to research it mm -hmm. and think about it, and we'll discuss it at the voting mm -hmm. meeting. Okay, thank next you. Next week. And the interim, maybe Bonnie can research the minutes and mm -hmm. confirm. Okay. Items previously tabled. I don't think we have any. <coughs> Section D, personnel. This is from. Thank you, Ms. Cerucci. Uh, we present for your approval for the February 28th um, sections 1 through 6 under resignations. We do have two resignations listed. Um, one is for Kathy Laird. We <coughs> want to congratulate her on her upcoming retirement. She has spent 16 years with the district, and at the end of June, um, she's going on a much-deserved retirement. As much as I tried to talk her into staying, I told her she still had till next week to change her mind. <coughs> Under leave of absences, we present four names. Transfers in accordance with the collective bargaining agreement. There are six transfers listed. Um, before the next meeting, we will have one or two more um, due to bids that are open and that will close tonight and I think in a couple days. For employment, we do have one substitute um, custodian listed. Under supplemental contracts, we have resignations and issuances for the fall sports. And under six, we have some volunteers, and we do have a couple extra names that we will have on um, to present to you for next week. Okay, does anybody have any questions uh, for yes. Mrs. Crump? Go ahead, Val. Um, if it's possible for right now, I'd like to table the positions for the cheerleading at the high school and at the junior high. There's some issues that came to my attention and uh, Mr. Lapsovich and I met with Mr. Avesti today regarding this, and I just wanted to have a little bit more further discussion on this, whether it's an executive session or not. So if we could just possibly put those okay. on here for right now. You could, can you make, you could make a motion at the voting meeting, because we're not going to vote on it tonight. Okay. It's just for discussion to table it next week. Okay. Is there any questions on any of the others from anybody? Okay, seeing none. Yeah. Conferences and conventions. Section E. Is that you, Mr. Chaykin? <coughs> Ms. Ritchie, uh, we do have four conferences, well, actually five conferences and conventions up for approval on February 28th. Uh, one for Joe DeLucente going to the um, English as a Second Language Conference. Mr. Naresboro to a, a um, Motivating Hard to Reach Students Conference. Mr. Rebesti attending the PA State Athletic Directors Conference, and uh, Ms. Pastor and Ms. Kunich going to the PA State Speech and Language Association Conference. Okay, any comments or discussion? Seeing none, Section F, Administrative Resolutions. Dr. Rossi? This is an action item. Um, to put on a for 30 day public dis display revised policy 918, which is a Title I parent involvement policy. We just got uh, uh, a revised monitoring instrument that requires that we um, take a look at this. And the, the monitoring is in May, so we wanted to get it on today. Item number two, Mr. Sharp. Dr. 
short. Items number two and three are related. Now, the reason why we had to actually do these this evening as an action item because they could not wait till the 28th. There's some required paperwork that our two real estate tax collectors need to have submitted to Allegheny County prior to March 1st. So that's the reason why we're bringing these forward. But these are typical when we have a reappointment of a tax collector. Item, first item is number two, is approve the purchase and payment for a four-year real estate tax collector bond in the bond coverage amount of $10 million for the municipality of Monroeville real estate tax collector, Patrick Fulkerson, in the to-be-determined premium amount to be split on a pro-rata basis between the district and the municipality of Monroeville based on the current real estate tax mills of each tax entity in effect at the time of bond issuance. And item number three is approve the purchase and the continuation of the annual payments for a five-year real estate tax collector bond and the bond coverage amount of $427,000 for the Borough of Pitcairn real estate tax collector, Sally DeRobio, from Western Surety Company through to HDH Group, Inc. in annual premium amounts to be split on a pro rata <coughs> basis between the district and the Borough of Pitcairn based on the current real estate tax mills of each tax entity in effect at the time of bond issuance. And for the district, that equates to the amount of $927.27 through January 1st, 2021. And fi item finally, number uh, item number four for action is to approve and authorize the attached list of district employees as depicted in Exhibit B to use and or be responsible for the use of their assigned district procurement card per the terms and conditions contained in board policy number 625 procurement cards. Uh, the reason why we're bringing this forward as an action item this evening is that one of the procurement cards is for the Gateway High School Musical Department <coughs> and we want them to be able to, to be able to utilize that card uh, since they're in the process of buying items for their set construction. Okay. Can I have a motion for section F items one to four? So moved. Second? So second. Thank you, John. John seconded that morning. That was Steve motion. Right? <coughs> Thank you, Steve. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Gottman. Aye. Dr. Kalkstein. Aye. Mr. Lapsovich. Aye. Mr. McIntyre. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. Mr. Ritter? Aye. Mrs. Warning? Aye. Mrs. Frucci? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Section G, resolutions presented by board members. We have section F. We have section F. Oh, sorry. I skipped one. Mm -hmm. Section F, administrative <coughs> resolutions. Mr. Short. Dr. Rossi, uh, items number one. And then Dr. Chagy could take items number two. And Mr. Shaw could take item number three. Okay, yeah, the first one uh, is the final approval of the science textbooks as listed below. They have been on for 30 day public display. And for item number two, we have three facility agreements uh, one with Gateway Band Boosters, Gateway Midget Football for um, Gateway High School Stadium, and also uh, Moss Side middle and backfield. Item number three, this is an annual resolution for approval. This would be to approve the 2018-2019 fiscal year Allegheny Intermediate Unit number three's program of services budget. The total budget for 1819 is $2,086,109 and reflects an overall increase of $52,105 or 2.56% in overall expenditures. Uh, the total district allocation by state subsidy withholding for 1819 for all Allegheny County School Districts is $1,765,288, reflecting a decrease of $69,910, or 3.81% from the 1718 budget. The district share of the allocation by state subsidy withholding for 1819 <coughs> will be determined by the Pennsylvania Department of Education according to the district's aid ratio and weighted <coughs> average daily membership. The district share currently estimated for 1819 is $70,024 and that's depicted in Exhibit A. Continue on. Next item number four, again, is another annual approval. Uh, this one is for the IDEA Part B Use of Funds subgrant agreement, also with the Allegheny Intermediate Unit 3 for the 18-19 fiscal year, as listed, and that is also depicted in Exhibit B. Item number five is an associated resolution. It is the attachment A, notice of adoption of policies, procedures, and use of funds by school district of the Allegheny Intermediate Unit Number 3, IDEA Part B, for the 2018-2019 fiscal year. That is depicted in Exhibit C. And the next item 
is for the Allegheny Intermediate Unit Number Three Educational Services Agreement for the 18-19 fiscal year. That's depicted in Exhibit D. Uh, please note the district is not obligated to purchase the special education services from the Allegheny Intermediate Unit Number Three. The educational services agreement includes the terms and conditions related to the services the district decides to purchase. Next item number six is the approval of the extension of preventive maintenance service agreement with Train USA Inc. for the Chiller and Building Automated Systems located at the high school and at the Ramsey Elementary School and approval of the discounted year one pre uh, payment. Uh, specifically, it's for Train USA for the for a three-year period beginning November 1st, 2017 through October 31st, 2020 <coughs> in the following amounts. Year one is $10,184. Year two, $10,591. And year three, $11,015. And approve the discounted year one prepayment to train as depicted in Exhibit E. And that would be at a 3% discount. Item number eight is for the uh, proof, the extension and continuation of a service agreement with CM Eichenlob Company for the required telescopic bleacher safety inspection services in the sports complex, Gateway High School, Gateway Middle School, and Mossai Middle School gymnasiums for the total amount of $4,443.60 during the 1920, 2021, and 21-22 <coughs> fiscal years as depicted in Exhibit F. And there's some, just wanted to note there's some savings uh, with entering into a three-year inspection agreement as indicated in the note, as opposed to going to a year-to-year -year, uh, inspection service uh, agreement with CM Mike and Love. Item number nine is approve addendum number one for the continuation of the curtailment services agreement with Energy Curtailment Specialists <coughs> and Compiero Energy LLC doing business as Clear Choice Energy, previously dated December 6, 2012, and NRG Curtailment Solutions, Inc., for the Electricity Demand Response Program services for the enrollment period of June 1, 2018 <coughs> through May 31, 2019 via the Power Pay Program Addendum Number 1 as depicted in Exhibit G. And just to give an, an, an idea of what, what this is, the district, and I'm going to say we've probably been in this now for probably close to 10 years, um, essentially for doing a, a one-hour test each summer because uh, we've been very fortunate there hasn't been any actual brownouts or anything that's really required us to shut down. But again, it happens during the summer months, the, the chances of that occurring, <coughs> which we're not session, which helps us with that. But for the most recent year that's actually going to be <coughs> expiring here on May 31st, 2018, the district is expected to receive a total of $23,698.02. So not, not too bad for essentially an, an hour's worth of grief and aggravation. It's pretty, so. pretty good hourly rate. <coughs> yeah. And next item is to uh, acceptance of district donation received. Uh, again, this was previously referenced, uh, I think, I believe it was last month. Uh, the remaining 50% of the student meals uh, by Bruce Dyson Associates um, in the amount of $2,013.75. Again, previously donated $1,970 <coughs> for the first 50% of the paid student meals in January 2018. Uh, that was for the student meals paid during the state football championship game. So, mm. thank you, Mr. Dice. Thanks, Mr. Dice. Thank you, Mr. Dice. And finally, the, the final item for review this evening is approve uh, Valerie Warning as a replacement signatory slash delegate to serve as a district's representative on the TRICOG Land Bank as part of the Land Bank School District Advisory Committee in accordance with the requirements and responsibilities as outlined in the Governmental Cooperative Agreement, creating and organizing the TRICOG Land Bank. And again, the, the above new district representative is necessary to replace the district's former signatory and, and delegate, Chad Stephen Board. Thanks, Val, for volunteering to do that. <coughs> Go ahead, George. Can I um, ask a question to Mr. Brown on this um, chiller? Soldiers. Mr. Brown, <coughs> how old is the chiller system now?
in in climate weather that, that really hurts it. <coughs> so it, as long as we keep up with it and keep it clean and you know, just like a car, it will last for many years to come. And you feel this is a good thing to keep on Absolutely, with these contracts? Because uh, the more we keep it, now this is not just for the chiller, this is also for all the control systems that we had just instituted. Uh, the price had gone down from the last <coughs> contract because of putting in all the new systems. Um, so having these people, uh, any dollars we save is tremendous. If you just call out a service rep without a basically a warranty or a contract, you're going to pay quite a bit more to have them here. Okay. Thank you. Um, and. Bruce, thank you. I know you don't do it for everybody, but the goodness of your heart for our football players and our students <coughs> of Gateway. And as part of the board, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Well, I, I, I appreciate that, but, you know, they had a heck of a season. And, you know, that, they went, that's as far as they've ever gone, and I, I'm proud to be part of that. Would you like us to invite the boys over to your house for a cookout this summer? Is that what you're trying to say? I'd rather come to the Hamburgers, hot dogs. Oh, 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 oh. Those boys can eat, you know. I'm not saying the boys. I'm saying me. Yeah, right. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions on Section F? Thank you. All right, Section G, resolutions by board members. Section G, is that yours? Yeah. No, that was action item. No, no. This is a study session. Yeah. No right. action items. The Gateway Board of Directors asked for the business manager to advertise an RFP request for a proposal as it relates to the to marketing and selling of Gateway Middle School property. The board is aware that a group has been previously approved on the, at the eight, April 18th, 2017 regular board meeting. However, for the sake of transparency, the board believes an RFP would allow for all interested companies to submit a proposal for the board to review. So moved. Just for discussion, does anybody have any questions or comments they would like to ask? Um, Mr. Donald or Mr. McIntyre? We're not voting on this tonight? No, we're not voting on this tonight. Okay. This is a study session. <coughs> we can discuss it tonight. Okay. Does anybody want to discuss? I just have a question. Um, we have our intergovernment gathering at Gateway Middle School on the 27th. Our meeting's the 28th. Mm -hmm. Isn't that correct? Mm -hmm. um, I was hoping the 360 would be able to attend this in case there was any questions. So how does that stand for them? That them showing up with any questions so that's just going to be like put on hold then or I mean I think they're a major factor in this well I, I think we still continue with the, the process meaning that they were approved at the April board meeting uh, the question comes in about the contract which we will of course investigate and get back to all board members <coughs> so moving forward with the meeting next week uh, I feel we have to keep, keep I mean, should they still I feel you know, um, with everything they have done, any questions that anybody might have from the public, they would be in a position to answer them. Should they be there or not? Mr. Dice? I think they should be there. I, you know, until uh, Rick's request is, is acted upon, they're, they're acting under the, the guise of the contract that okay. was the good rules. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Steve. All right, thank you. I, I want everybody to understand you're, you're putting them in a precarious situation, but <coughs> that's life in the fast track. That's what everybody gets paid a lot of money for. Thank you. This could have been avoided if things had been done maybe more procedurally, accurately, more transparently a year ago. You know, if the contract had come before the board and got voted on, I don't, I don't think any of this is even a discussion at this point. But since we don't currently have an actual legal binding contract with them, I, I think it, it we're, we're not serving our, our community and the taxpayers and the people you know that have voted for us if we don't look at all the options available. You know that this is like a you've even said see like a two year long process we're going through here at a minimum. I don't think there's any 
any need to, to, to keep rushing or to feel like, you know, pumping the brakes, taking a step back and saying, hey, you know, we, we like this. <clears throat> I like their presentation. I was very impressed. It's not about them not being qualified. It's about us having as many options on the table as possible before we make the decision that's going to be a, a 300 some thousand dollar contract. Anybody? All right, so what's procedurally, um, voting and grounds committee didn't break anything procedurally because it's not required that they put this out to bid. Um, but what Mr. McIntyre is saying is coming in as a new board member, he felt that it should be looked at by multiple people. So just to kind of explain what this conversation is about is that, you know, the board, the building and grounds committee recommended the 360 group. Uh, the contract was presented and signed off on. However, perhaps it wasn't board approved. We have to determine that through the minutes. Uh, to see if the board actually voted on the actual contract and if they didn't what do we do do we vote yes on it's up to the board um, the majority of the board to suspend that contract and <coughs> talk to some other companies to make sure we've made the right decision or the board votes no they want to keep moving forward with the 360 group uh, so there's a couple things that the board has to think about and talk about uh, over the next week and weigh in your own minds because Mr. Dice is correct. We have already have a good faith agreement with a company uh, and we put them in a precarious position. And sometimes, as uh, you've said in the past, it's hard to put the toothpaste back in the tube. Uh, but again, you know, Mr. McIntyre also brings up some very good points. Uh, when we, you know, chose this company 10 months ago, we didn't have uh, a lot of interest. Now it's coming to the surface. There's a lot of people in the community discussing the sale of the property and you know is it fair for him to say you know when you're selling a 10 to 20 million dollar piece of property could be the biggest decision the school board makes in the four years that you're in service here do you want to make sure that you've talked to all the players and that you're working with the best person absolutely so go ahead mr lapsevich i could see mr mcintyre's uh, concerns now on this but like I said previously, a couple of weeks ago, if we start opening stuff that I wasn't happy with previous boards before I come on here, we could be here forever and not get anything done. No new business at all. And that's my main concern. Whatever decision they made, I mean, I was part of it, and there was eight other people who was part of it, that they okayed this. Okay, I, I can't say okayed it, but they knew the 360 group was coming in. Um, that's my only concern because anymore we're talking about 360 group, but I'm not hearing anything about education anymore. That's what's disturbing me. <coughs> so that's the only thing I have to say. Well, part of this board's responsibility is to oversee the financial position of the school district <coughs> and to make sure that we're a watchdog of the taxpayer's money. Yeah, and so, I'm a taxpayer. But it is part of part of well our job to, yeah. to do both. Yeah. So. Um, we'll see. The board is a nine-member body, and five votes will control the decision. So I hope everybody, if they have any questions, that they will uh, address those and talk about those uh, the next week. Uh, number two, whose item is number two? We're seeing previously approved fee schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we had some issues in the past. So previously, we had a motion a resolution to have ticket prices for Gateway Middle School and Gateway High School non-athletic performances for $3 at non-athletic at the high school and $2 at Gateway Middle School. Um, I want to rescind that and make a new school fee schedule, which we had talked about at the policy meeting, through the following fee schedule for Gateway High School athletic events. This is just for the athletic events. The adult prices would be $6 and student prices would be $3. <clears throat> Let me ask a question. Did this come out of your policy committee? Yes, it did. Yeah. Okay. We did discuss this. Gotcha. Okay. So the recommendation is six and three. Yeah. Okay. Correct. I have a question. Okay, uh, so if we're looking to make the ticket six and three dollars, what were they before? They were uh, six and three. 
six and three. They were six and three. This, it was just never stated in a policy. Oh, okay. policy. Yeah. Okay. The thing was when they came to the gate, the students, which has option to purchase during the lunch periods at a cheaper price, they are also going to be charged six dollars. But at the gate, this is going to be three dollars now at the gate. Okay. Number four. Thank you. Okay, um, number four, the sale of obsolete school equipment. The approval to sell obsolete school equipment by way of advertising on a district website. If sales do not go as expected, I need to be advertised in the newspaper. This came about with the sale of technology equipment that they have done. Um, before they used to put out a blast to students, which it was not the board's recommendation. I'm not, it was so during the policy meeting, Mr. Brown had Mr. Michael Brown um, came up with this, and it was agreed upon at the policy committee with this. And this is our policy that we would like to put into effect. Is, it, is this legal, Mr. Dice, to advertise on the district website? I know we have some legal requirements of advertising to the entire community, and the entire community may not have access or look at the Gateway School District website. What's your legal opinion? Yeah, I, I, I have some problem with that. Did you guys discuss that? Yes, we did. Uh, that was not, I, I made, my memory is a little punch drunk from a lot of concussion, but um, I, I don't remember that being what we what we actually decided. I thought we were going to say we wanted to get it out to as wide of a net as possible. What we need to do that is we were going to do the, the website parents. and the newspaper and then that we should be covered. Yeah, that. I'm personally not comfortable with just the website. Is uh, Mike out there? Micah. Always watching. He's, He's coming. coming. Mr. Dice, isn't it our legal obligation to advertise the entire community? Yeah, I don't think you can, I don't think advertising on the internet uh, is, meets the requirements of your obligation to give notice to the public of a sale. <coughs> um, I think that uh, it's to a select group that have computers. Yeah. And, and I, I think that uh, Traditionally, it has been the case that newspapers have been used as a means of advertising for public sale in the form of an auction. So, okay. I, so it's your legal recommendation that we advertise in the newspaper and that be part of our policy. Yeah, and it, it newspaper be, and website. Yeah, you can do the website. Just you, I want you to do the newspaper. Mary Beth, well, newspaper because they don't get the Times Express or anything in Pick here no more. So there's really no nothing we can have. Well, that's there's what. An yeah, that, 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 there's an online post gazette. What's that? There's an online post gazette and an online. Trip but how? But if they don't have a computer, there's people down there that can't. A lot of them people can't afford a computer down in Pickett. So you're aware. The statute talks about you know a newspaper I mean? of general circulation. So, you know, if if the post gazette is a newspaper of general circulation, that's what I'd use. It's a matter of meeting the legal requirement. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> it was all a shock. If, if I could. I would ask permission to go back and I can t kind of tweak this resolution a little bit to kind of mirror when we go out the bid where we state that it'll be advertised bids in the, um, the Post-Gazette, which is actually the, the, the eastern section uh, for that, as well as to meet our second requirement of two newspapers. We've typically been utilizing the Greensburg Tribune Review, but we would also advertise on the district website as well. We typically do like the three-prong. Advertising That's with exactly that. What That's what I thought we walked so, away from the right. policy okay. meeting. So I'll, I'll, I'll change it. it to be and, um, and um, should there be should there be language in this uh, reflecting that these the sales of this equipment is for members of the community first? No, isn't that something we agree on? Yeah, we did. We talked about we that. We absolutely agree on that because we were selling to the teachers before the community members could get there. I thought that's yeah, something that we. I'd like to toss the question to Mr. Dice. The restriction. If if we would just contact the parents of students, that wouldn't be sufficient because there are more people involved in the district than just the parents of students. Right. Number two, some of the people um, in the district are teachers who don't live in the district. But we're not, that's so not if we just I'm sorry. so if we just contacted the people. Um, via the school's mechanism than some of the teachers who do not live in the district and do not pay taxes in the district, they would be one of the first ones to know and be able to come and take advantage of a sale that by rights should go to the people who are in the district who pay taxes. Therefore, I think it's proper that we find a non-electronic means. I think you follow Paul's advice. 
Paul's advice. Yeah. I recommend we follow Paul's advice. Right. <laughs> because he's studies. already thought this. Three, approach, <laughs> <clears throat> you shouldn't treat this any different than any other bidding that mm -hmm. we do. Right. Paul, you will draft that up for the yep. next meeting. I will, I will make that change tomorrow. Thank you, <laughs> Now, question here. Mm -hmm. um, Micah, before you leave. With some of the, like what we have left now, with the computers that we have left and any electronic equipment, would it, is it feasible to advertise in the paper for the cost for what we have left to get back? Um, I, I would think so. You should speak up there because the people at home yeah. can't see you. What do you mean, is it feasible? In other words, do we have <coughs> this much to sell if it's going to cost this yeah. much? Yeah. It doesn't matter. You're missing the point. It's the law. We have to be in compliance <coughs> with the law. I don't care if it costs us more than we get out of it. If we're breaking the right. law, we can't break the law. Well, an option would be, I think, maybe what Val's going for is if we don't have enough to make it worthwhile to advertise to sell, we hold it until we do, and then we advertise and sell. That's fine. Build a bucket, way. right. And we have enough, I think, it would be worthwhile to, okay. to go through the process. All right, thanks, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. All right, anything yeah. else on yeah. Section G? Yeah. All right, comments from residents on non-agenda items? Anyone? Sign up. Does anyone like to address the board on a non-agenda item? <coughs> None? There's okay. a chance, John. You can yell at all of us at once. I'm going to excuse myself. <laughs> Do you have something to say? Uh, Heather May, J. 1332 Buckford Drive. Right? The recent events in Florida. Um, is there any reason why we haven't had any active shooter drills at any of the schools? We have one scheduled for April. It was on the calendar before the actual shooting occurred. That is something that we do regularly. Yes, there's a PDE requirement that states once per year for that. Um, we've also had a number of um, internal, external lockdown drills within the buildings as well. What buildings? Uh, I did speak with, uh, speak with Mr. Jack. He confirmed that he has said that at the beginning of the year. I'll tell you what, I, I, I would suggest that if you, you want any more additional detail about what the, those things are. You, why don't you talk to the individuals? I don't know that we want to publish mm -hmm. where so we're okay. doing lockdowns. And no, no, no. I'm just asking. I thought that was like one of the goals of having our own school police force, so that we can do things like this since being a teacher. It gave me middle school. I don't remember ever mm -hmm. having a drill, so that's why I'm asking. Did you speak with Mr. Telly? I did not. I Perhaps you could start there. Okay, so he's in charge of. Mm -hmm. Okay, did not know that. Um, with mental health is such a big issue, um, I think the board needs to look at, and I know it's going to cost money, but we need more social workers in this district. <clears throat> we had a kid at the high school that was just arrested. We had a kid at my building that was suspended for 45 days. And then what happened with the milestones group that used to be in our buildings, so I'm, I'm not pointing any fingers, I just don't know what happened to them, but I think mental health is such a big issue that we don't have enough resources in this district to help the students with the issues that they have. So. Thank you, as always. Okay, thanks. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else like to address the board? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to reports. Mr. Short, would you like to go first? Uh, yes. First and foremost, the incident in Florida uh, has affected each and every one of us. Uh, as a father myself, I, I always look towards the school district providing a, a safe and, and healthy uh, place to educate our children. And rest assured, in this community, in our school district, uh, I've had a number of emails from our parents questioning uh, what we have in place uh, a lot of the information I will provide on the email or I should say the district website tomorrow morning uh, listing specifics about what we do offer and really um, assist our children in preparing for um, a horror horrific or tragic situation such as Florida uh, these things are not easy 
uh, the, the communication piece is essential that if there is something out there either on social media overheard within the community students uh, hearing something within the classroom <coughs> or the cafeteria everyone has an obligation to inform and that means contact the principal of the building uh, we do have on our district website uh, a tip line an anonymous tip line that could report information uh, please call the district office if you hear or see anything we will continue to evaluate and assess our measures as far as school safety we have been on the cutting edge of hiring our own gateway school police two years ago when it was met with criticism however the phone calls we've received as a district from many school districts across across the commonwealth inquiring about how they can go about making this change shows that we have been proactive in securing the safety and welfare of our kids <clears throat> i apologize for my voice a little under the weather tonight uh, but rest assured uh, we will be vigilant we will be increasing our drills uh, above and beyond what's uh, required by the state and the commonwealth of pennsylvania so thank you very much Mr. Shakey, do you have anything this evening? No, Dr. Rossi? Nothing at this time. Mr. Sean? Thank you. Actually, I'm just going to repeat what I had said at the start of the meeting again, <coughs> just to get it out there. Uh, the Budget and Finance Committee meeting for this Thursday, February 22nd, 2018, has been canceled. The first meeting will occur on March 15th, 2018, at 6 p.m. in the high school LGI. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Crum? Nothing at this time. Thank you. Mr. Ritter. Sure. Four things. The PSBA, the Pennsylvania School Board Association, has some events that they're offering to help educate the board members as to what the state is doing, uh, what the legal matters are, what our role should be, how we should best prepare for, you know, uh, uh, what we do here. And so on Monday, uh, the 27th, We'll be evaluating the Commonwealth Education Blueprint. About two months ago, some of us got together in Harrisburg and hammered out some sort of a vision that's going to be rolled out over the next one to three years. And we picked, Cherry picked all the things that we thought were mm, worth putting on the table for thought. We polished some of the language. They took the minutes of those, polished them some, some, some more. And they're sprinkling about 10 events all over Pennsylvania we've got two coming up in our area. The closest one to us will be next Monday in the Carnegie area. And so I sent the board uh, a note recommending that we all go out and learn what those hot topics are and what the rest of the state thinks about it because we think a little differently here on our end of the state than others do and in different spots of the state. So we need to add our two cents to this common education blueprint. The way to do it is to put your boots on the ground and go there and show up and speak. Okay, number two, there's a spring legal roundup that's going to be held a little later that day, next week, at the same uh, place. So they're going to talk about many, many things, special education, school meals, weapons, right to know law, demolition, demotions, drug testing. There's about 20 items that are hot topics that have had legal updates that the board should be informed about. So please, uh, if you can't attend that. Number three two days from now, no, tomorrow, there's going to be a broadcast by some folks from the PSBA regarding the trouble that's occurred in Puerto Rico. The state has a mandate to educate its students. What happens when you don't even have a school, when you don't have water, when the teachers can't drive on the roads because there are no more roads? And you still have a mandate to educate students. So this is like the worst case, and they, some places in Puerto Rico still don't have electricity. All right, these are U.S. citizens, right? So trying to put my generalized hat on, I think, what can we do in our little corner of the world here in association with the other school districts, 500 school districts in Pennsylvania, to see if there's something we can do? I don't know. <coughs> I don't know. So they're going to um, have a a one-hour conference call, I think it would be good for us to get on and ask each of us, ask the questions. What can we do, if anything, to help? I don't know. Send some teachers down there, invite some kids up, send money down, do a fundraiser. I don't know. I don't know. 
but it's worth us investing in. It shows who we are <coughs> as a board. If we really care about the kid, if we really care about the kids, it shouldn't be just our kids in our district. It should be the neighboring districts as well because, for example, drugs go into neighboring districts, they come into our district and vice versa. So we have to think more globally than locally. And it shows who we are. And it helps prepare, it helps the students and the parents and the staff to know that their board is not so tunnel focused on just our little corner of the world, that the rest, we are citizens of the rest of the world as well. This is one way we get to show that, by showing up, listening, and seeing if there is anything we can, we can do. And if there isn't, that's okay. Our turn will come where we will be able to find something we can do. So, number four. Um, yesterday, there was an in-service meeting while the rest of the world had the day off. There are teachers and the maintenance workers and everyone else. I'm sorry, am I jumping ahead? No. They came and they heard uh, a couple different um, presentations regarding diversity awareness, suicide awareness, and mandated re reporter training. Boy, oh boy. I've taken a bunch of these courses a bunch of times. Yesterday was the, one of the best. <coughs> eye-opening sessions that I've been to in a long time. The people who talked about suicide awareness, they had suicides in their own families. And towards the end of the discussions, some of those, you know, heartfelt sentiments came pouring out. And so it helped the people in the audience, you know, me and the other, the, the, the teachers, understand what to look for, what those signs are of trouble, and what to do about it. So that was one. Number two, mandated reporter training. There are some things that maintenance workers get to see that teachers don't get to see. <clears throat> and so we talked about what should maintenance workers or cafeteria workers do in order to help identify students who are troubled and just move it, move it that issue along to the right person <laughs> so that the kid can get the help that they need. So this was an eye-opener. I really liked it. This is uh, Crump. You had a... a big hand in putting this team together of speakers. So thank you very much for doing that. No, oh, gentlemen down there, I just did mandate reporter training, but thank so you. So you've given her all the credit too? No, no, no. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. But, you know, but, but great job staff. The staff did this. I got to peek Mr. a little bit. Mr. Reuters, thank you for showing up because uh, you were able to see firsthand all of the work that goes into the planning and preparation of an in-service. See, I ask sneaky questions, like I said, you know, a teacher gets to see kids misbehaving in class, but isn't it true that the, the uh, maintenance workers, they get to see what's happening, they open the door in the bathroom and they see that, you know, a puff of smoke comes out, so the teacher might not know the kids are smoking, but the maintenance workers do. That doesn't isn't happen that here true? Anymore. And the maintenance <laughs> workers are all, they're, they're biting their lips and saying, Mr. Ritter, you don't even know the things that we see That's that, true. you know. And, and, and so, thank you very much for, for putting all that together, staff. That's Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Mrs. Warning, I'm going to excuse myself after I'm done here because I want to get to the basketball game at Fox Chapel for our boys during the playoffs. But um, just uh, two things. Mrs. Crump, um, I thought Mrs. Bungard was going to be here this evening, but I had uh, several requests from different schools. If they could provide QBS training for the paraprofessionals, um, it's getting to a point where only a few in the schools know how to use that. So if they could put together and in service for them? If you and it, they have done one and we are scheduling okay. one in the future. Okay, if they could put that like <clears throat> faster if possible because they're very slim at some of the schools. And Mrs. Morning, I did inform Mrs. Bungard. She had an appointment already scheduled tonight okay. uh, with her child, so. Okay, all right. Um, February 10th, I was invited to the father-daughter dance that University Park had for their fathers and daughters. And it was very emotional to me because the last time I danced with my dad was at my wedding. And parents, fathers, um, there's just one thing. If I could get another dance, another walk with my dad, um, I'd play a song that would never, ever end and how I'd love to dance with my dad again. So every time that you have an opportunity to do something with your children, it's a big thing because it doesn't go away. So with that, I'm going to exit. Thanks, Val. Thanks. You can make us cry when we <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, been, it's been hard. Mr. Lapsovich. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just got two comments uh, mm -hmm. to Mr. Yeager. 
thank you for your heartwarming uh, thanks and overwhelming support you gave to our school. And also, Mr. Short, I have a question for you for my wife. Mm -hmm. She was one of the people that addressed the um, Arcan to come in, mm -hmm. Arcan to come into buildings. Okay, she told me after so long it's got to be circulated because it gets old. Mm -hmm. So she was wondering, it's been a year now if it's been circulated or thrown out or whatever they have to do with it. And I can speak with our nursing staff and uh, determine. Okay. We do have a few here. Thank you. And I'll talk to them tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. O'Donnell. Yeah, I'd like to begin by thanking John for you know, going to Harrisburg and <clears throat> working on a lot of these issues with PSBA that are important to us <coughs> as a school district. And frequently it doesn't get the attention and the sort of a spotlight that, for example, my committee gets because we work on toilets and urinals. So uh, <laughs> appreciate that, we really do. Um, I also want to make a comment regarding uh, security and safety. While uh, Dr. Short's going to send a communique out via the, the website um, tomorrow, I think it's important for parents and students who are listening this evening to know that long before this incident occurred, which is terribly tragic, um, the previous board had undertaken a series of initiatives uh, to uh, help ensure that our children are safe here in the district day in and day out. Now, having said that, uh, folks have got to understand that we're not going to advertise, we're not going to talk about the kinds of initiatives that we have taken, but I think it is important for you to know that, uh, that we have indeed looked at a whole series of issues and taken action. I would um, also like to ask the administration, and if you want this in the form of a resolution, <coughs> I can make the resolution tonight, um, but I'd like the administration to contact the appropriate sources, uh, which perhaps might include our accounting firm, uh, Pennsylvania uh, Taxing Bureau, to determine how we uh, can go about securing tax credits for the utilities, uh, the utility savings that we've affected, the outside lights, the inside lights, the water, so on and so forth, and get back to us to, you know, let us know what that, what that process is. I know that some people, when we've had this conversation, I know that some people are going to say that because we are a not-for-profit organization that we can't use tax credits. Well, that's true. We don't pay taxes, so we don't use tax credits to offset uh, as a, mm -hmm. a, a for-profit corporation. But tax credits are like commodities. And I believe that we can explore the possibility of securing the credits and then selling them to the benefit of taxpayers. Okay? So do you want that in a resolution, or are we just okay? You'll look in. You'll, you'll do that. We'll, we'll look into it. I'll get with Bob Brown and Mr. Shaw. And yeah. Can, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. O'Donnell. Okay. <laughs> you ever got a chance? Did I see myself? No, I'm, I'm satisfied. <laughs> Everything's been covered. Mr. McIntyre. Um, I'll be brief. I just wanted to take a moment to uh, recognize a, a gateway student athlete. Um, forgive me, the last name is Neuendorfer. Mm -hmm. uh, Madison Neuendorfer. Uh, as a 15-year-old sophomore at Gateway, uh, it's the <coughs> second year that she's played varsity uh, soccer uh, for Gateway, which is fairly impressive as a freshman to come in and, and be playing varsity. I understand she won. She was named All Section mm -hmm. despite missing, I think, 10 games with a concussion, wow. which is an impressive stat. Um, <coughs> she was recently offered an opportunity to represent uh, U.S. Youth Soccer in Costa Rica which is, uh, as her mother said in the, in the email, telling us uh, that's kind of a trip of a lifetime for, for a 15-year-old kid to be able to represent her country, represent, in a way, her school district. The gateways listed in the program, uh, you know, in a foreign country, and get to see the culture, and they're visiting the capital. And it, it just sounds like a wonderful experience and a wonderful opportunity. It sure is. And to go to there, to go there and, and be playing in that level of a, of a soccer tournament, is really extraordinary. 
And I, I also understand she uh, has already had a, a verbal commitment to a soccer scholarship with Duquesne University as a sophomore. So that, this, this kid's pretty impressive. And uh, if, if it pleases the board, I'd like to, whenever she comes back from the trip and, uh, you know, gets settled and gets her, her collective self together, I'd actually like to see her maybe come and speak to the board and tell us about the trip and her experiences there. I believe she's an honor roll student. Yeah, I think that's something her mother mentioned as well. So, I mean, she, she really seems like she's got, you know, all of her stuff together. And I, I'd love to hear from her and hear, hear about her experience. Mm -hmm. So, we'll get her on as the student. Uh, other than that, um, I'd like to just personally thank uh, the administration and uh, the members of the Gateway Police Department for their diligent work on the past week with, you know, everything that's gone on. You guys are always seem to be right on point, a step ahead, if not just right on time. And I, and I appreciated having a one child and, oh yeah, I can, uh, it's Facebook official now, so I can talk about it in public. I have a second child on the way, so. Who will also be a gateway kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's afraid I'm going to meet the father. <laughs> <laughs> he got you there. <laughs> so just as a, as a board member, as a member of the community, and most importantly as a parent, I, I, I thank all of you. I thank the former board for uh, doing what you guys did to get the police department put in place. And I thank the, the, the men and women that serve us on the gateway police department. They do an excellent job. And I, I know I feel safe putting my child on the bus every morning. So thank you. Thank you, Rick. Mr. Gottman. Oh, I feel like I have to say something now. Everyone else did. Um, I just want to wish our basketball team the best of luck tonight in their game. Yeah, uh, it, it's ex always exciting when one of your teams is competing for a title, and it was really fun to watch our football team go for the title. And when you have two teams within your school competing like this, it, it's it's a lot of fun and instills a lot of pride to be a former Gateway grad. That's all I got. That's right. Thank you. Jesse? Uh, yeah, I just want to take a minute to congratulate someone that works tirelessly for this district and has for many years, and that is Mrs. Bonnie Isha. Um, she recently welcomed her first grandchild into the world. Um, February 7th, two weeks ago, yes. just about, yes. uh, her daughter Amanda gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, Mila Catherine Patsy. Yes. Um, her daughter Amanda and her husband Kevin um, live in Monroeville, so as it stands now, Mila will be a Gateway Gator one day, so that's <laughs> awesome. Um, and I know all this because Amanda and Kevin are dear friends of mine, and oh. they're also Gateway graduates, so I've known them for many years. Thank you. Um, so congrats to Bonnie, uh, the Isha family, and the Massey family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I got <coughs> you have an hour. <laughs> or two. After we adjourn. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Do you have a report? Uh, from your corner of the world oh, okay I would like to uh, wish uh, Scotty uh, Williams who's not here tonight uh, good luck he's recovering from some dental work which is why I was running the meeting this evening mm -hmm. um, yeah I, uh, and I would like to congratulate Kathy Laird on her retirement because she was a secretary at Ramsey where my children attended uh, and she was a great lady to work with and I'm sure she will be greatly missed mm -hmm. so with that a motion to adjourn so moved. All in favor? Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you, Jesse. That was yeah, nice. Perfect.